Well, good morning. I'm Steve Caddick, and uh, today we're going to do a little bit of hand engraving. And uh, specifically, I'm, I'm going to engrave um, one of the 28 flanges that go on a Vanga, uh, uh, Vega Artist model uh, banjo. So without further ado, let's get started. And I'll describe things as I'm going along. So, first off, we're going to start with a little close-up here of my uh, engraving setup. This is my engraver's die block, and uh, this is my uh, my small vise that's in the bigger. This is the small vise. This is the bigger vise, and it's holding this one. And that's where I'm going to put the the uh, the flange. So you can see I've got a, a, a couple of pins. Well, there's four pins in here that will um, hold the flange in place for me. I'll get it in there nice and tight. Let me buff it off a little bit. And this is my uh, master engraving right here. It's on just on a piece of uh, on a piece of brass. And what I do with that is I put a little bit of an of engraver's wax on it. I'll roll that on the on the wax so I get a little wax on that piece of brass. Then I take a little piece of uh, um, acetate and I'm going to transfer that wax onto the piece I'm going to engrave. So I just use a little a little burnisher and off we go. I just rub the burnisher on top of the plastic acetate and that's going to lift off the wax. Hopefully we can see that little bit of a sheen of wax on there. And I'm going to transfer that onto the flange. And just line it up and just rub it again. Doesn't have to be a perfect impression, just I just want to see my outlines. And there it is. So, um, there, you can see a little bit of it right on there. All right, now I'm going to take my, my flat graver, my number 40 flat graver. It's a hand, it's a hand tool. I put it in my palm. And here we go. I'm going to start engraving. Hopefully you can see all of this. And I'm doing what's called a, a wriggle cut. I'm wriggling along and it's just a side to side motion like this. And it leaves a very specific type of engraving cut in the metal. I'm engraving brass. The tool is made out of steel. And before I forget, I'm going to put my little glove on here in case I slip. Um, I have slipped in the past and cut myself by jamming the tool into it. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to cut myself, so. Hopefully you can see the tip of the, of the uh, engraver going through the metal. Takes a fair amount of strength to push these tools through the metal. The nice thing about an engraver's vise is I can reset as I'm going the position of my work so that my tool will uh, 
will cut through it. And as you can see, I've got a nice uh, basic little border there. But I do need to do one other thing here. Because I need a, a circle, I'm going to use my little circle template to just lay out just this half circle right here around that. Now there's a hole here. See that little hole? That's where the hook comes through on the banjo to hold it in place. And I want to have a, a round circle right around that, that hole. And so it's nice when you can draw that circle in there and you have something that you can follow as a guide. To engrave that half circle with and then straight lines after that. And there we go, there's that that little half circle with the lines. Now for the rest of the main part of the design on here. Which is these leaves. And these are the outlines of the leaves. I'll do the detail here as soon as I get done with outlining it. You can see I turned the work into the tool. That makes it a cleaner cut and a better um, a better way of getting the design just right. That wax impression gives me something I can see on the metal and I can keep my, my design elements uh, consistent throughout the entire banjo by doing it this way as opposed to just either drawing it on there on each and every one or just doing it, doing it freehand. I can do both but I, when I want to be very consistent from one flange to another, because there's 28 of these, I want to make sure that um, the designs are very, very similar from one to the other. The only things I freehand on this are the veins in these leaves, and you'll see that here in a couple of minutes. Is the last of that. So I put that tool down. We're going to change to a different tool. I'll wipe off the wax because I don't need that anymore. And you can see that uh, where am I here? You can see that design in there. How it looks. So now I'm changing to this engraver, which is a very sharp tool, another palm tool, I hold it in my palm, and it's got a little triangle shape on the end, that little diamond shape. Well, the point of that diamond is extremely sharp, and I'm going to do lines with, with that. And so I like to rest my thumb on the edge of, of the thing here so I have something to push against and I'll do a straight line and that gives me a little V cut straight line I don't know if you can see that uh, too close I don't know if you can see that that one straight line on there or not it's hard to tell but that's the main vein of the of the leaf and now I'm gonna do the um, the side the side veins and I put it in and I give it a slight twist so I'm partly on the side edge of the blade 
of that of that triangle that diamond and that gives me a nice little bright cut push it in and I twist. yeah see how that slipped got to be real careful that's why I wear the glove those slips happen very very quickly go back down that center vein to remove those burrs and that's the first one right there you see how the light plays off of those veins that's the idea when the performer is playing this banjo that light will be dancing off the entire instrument things I need to do is where that slip is which is in actually in a, in a, in a almost hidden place I'm using a um, my burnisher this is a, an old steel file that I turned into a burnisher and what I'm gonna do is just rub out a little bit of that problem area there and I'll be able to buff see I'm just pushing the brass around a little bit to cover up that that scratch from that slip unfortunately those things do happen not so much when I'm just concentrating on engraving and not making a video at the same time but I'm only doing this one little video This is just a little bit of very fine emery paper, 600. And I have up to 4,000 grit. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now to continue on here. Doing the same thing. I'm going to have a nice straight line down the middle of the leaf. And then do the veins. Sometimes I like to listen to music while I'm doing this because it's relaxing. I really enjoy this process. Let me do some blatant self-promotion for those of you who are watching this video and our banjo players and maybe have a nice banjo that you'd like to make better by having me engrave it for you doesn't have to be this design I have many many different patterns that I can use I can do a custom one for you and this will greatly increase the value of your instrument this is art in metal I'm a graduate of the New England School of Design although I did not study hand engraving there what I did study was graphic design illustration all that stuff drawing I actually learned how to engrave when I was working at the Balfour company in the mid to late 70s although I was not a hand engraver there I worked in uh, photography and uh, offset printing um, I did work with the hand engravers there were some of them right in the same department that I was in and I found the process to be very fascinating and a couple of the guys that were working there noticed my interest and uh, I asked a lot of questions and they put together a small set of tools for me to practice with so I could try it and uh, Lo and behold, I really enjoyed it. 
And so I started engraving banjos soon after that, mostly for Paul Simpson's brand new banjos. He made nine banjos over the course of 10 or 12 years before he completely retired. And I engraved all nine of his banjos for him. And then after that, I just started engraving banjos for whoever wanted me to do it. And now I'm doing this pretty much full time, because I had done that for part time for many years. And now that I'm no longer in the printing uh, industry, I'm teaching banjo, the tenor, online with a webcam, live online lessons. And I'm doing banjo repair work and hand engraving. So think of me when you want to have a project done. As you can see, I'm working along here on these veins in the leaves. It's a little bit of a tedious and painstaking process, but the overall look is really nice when all of them are done and the whole banjo is put together. Somebody asked me if this particular de design was a marijuana leaf and no it's not. It's just a, a series of leaves in this little sort of well-balanced um, design that uh, I came up with some years ago and I've engraved three or four banjos with this particular design with a variety of different ways of doing veins. This one is these bright cut side shoot veins that really catch the light very very nicely and I have some others that I've done, a little different variation on the pattern. Is the last leaf. I can engrave about four of these flanges at a time. Then I got to take a little break. My hand gets tired, mostly the muscles in my forearm from squeezing the tool and pushing it. Some engravers have uh, air assisted um, hand tools. I, I don't. I, th these are not air, you know, it's not like a little miniature jackhammer. This is really old style. And uh, it's interesting to, to work with. Put a little cutting oil on there now and uh, use some 600 to sand off the burrs before I polish it. I won't bother you with that part of the process. Wipe it off. Let me pop it on out of there and see if we can't focus in on that. There is that Vega flange made out of brass. These will be highly polished and then gold plated. And that's it. Thanks for watching.